Hey everyone, Sean Watase here, back with another tutorial video. And in today's video, we're gonna be building a multi-chain experience with account abstraction. Now we made a previous video going over this new feature of ours, where we introduced an update to our smart wallets, allowing you to have the same wallet address across multiple supported chains. Now this was something new and important that we released with smart wallets. And the importance of it is because if you're ever familiar with smart wallets or account abstraction, normally you would need to deploy an account factory smart contract that generated these smart contract wallets for your users. And this really limited account abstraction to the chain that you deployed on. Meaning if I deployed a account factory on the Ethereum network, that account factory contract would only really be able to generate wallets or smart contract wallets on the Ethereum blockchain. If I then deployed the account factory to another chain, if I didn't use something called deterministic deployment, what I would end up getting is different wallet addresses across multiple chains. And different wallet addresses makes it very difficult and if not something that you wouldn't want to do for a user experience when it comes to interacting with multiple chains using account abstraction. So with this new feature that we added, you are now able to have the same wallet address through account abstraction, through deterministic deployment across multiple chains. This means that I can now use account abstraction pretty much like a regular Web3 wallet and have the functionality and ability to switch the chains that I want to interact with. This depends, of course, that the chain is supported and that there was an account factory contract deterministically deployed to those chains. So what we built here is a little experiment. What if we could take advantage of this new feature and build out an application or maybe even a game of some type that interacts with different chains using account abstraction. So an overview of what we're gonna cover in this video, we'll first take a look at a demo of the experiment that we are going to be building out. We'll then deploy ourselves our smart contracts on multiple chains, and then we'll build out our front end application and build out this experience where a user can use account abstraction or third web smart wallets across multiple chains and interact with these contracts seamlessly. So with all of that being said, let's jump on the computer here. Let's take a look at the demo that we're going to be building. So right here, this is my demo. This is the multi-chain experiment that we're gonna be building. And the experiment that I wanted to try and build out was again, if we can now use account abstraction across multiple chains and we can keep the same wallet address, this means that I can have different assets on different chains, still using account abstraction, still allowing things like gasless transactions through something like a paymaster. And I can, again, build this experience on things like Ethereum, things like Base, things like Polygon. I can use all these different chains and I can combine them all into one application and a user doesn't really need to see any of that because if I combine account abstraction with something like an in-app wallet, so if I hit my connect wallet here, in-app wallet being you know social logins, email, phone number, or even pass key, I'm just gonna use my pass key here. What this will do is allow one, our user to just connect using a familiar login method like from a web2 application but when you use in-app wallets in the combination with account abstraction or in combination with smart wallets within third web, you won't get any pop-ups when switching chains. You won't get any pop-ups when having to confirm transactions and you can really create this seamless experience. So I just signed in with my pass key and we have different options here. So you can see here, um, I have my wallet address down here. It pulled up my wallet address. If I come here, you can see this is a smart account or using um, account abstraction here. Uh, we're on the Sepolia network. So I have a few buttons here and we one have our claim Sepolia NFT. So let's just say you had a NFT collection on the ETH blockchain. You could have a user use that as like maybe their main NFT. So we can claim this. Now I do have a paymaster turned on and gasless transactions turned on. So this is actually just going to claim the NFT for us. You can see I don't have any uh, Sepolia ETH in my wallet. Um, we have our NFT just got claimed. You can see here down at the bottom, Sepolia NFT, I now have one. So now maybe I have the main NFT that I need to you know, interact with the application that is on ETH mainnet. Maybe uh, I wanna have a token in my application, but I don't want the token to be on ETH mainnet. Maybe gas fees and transaction fees are too much. Maybe I want to deploy my token on, let's say right here, on the mode blockchain. So let's claim some tokens here. You can see what will happen here is the wallet automatically switches over to the network that it needs to be on. Uh, I'm claiming the tokens. Again, I have gas is turned on, Paymaster is covering the gas. I have claimed my mode tokens 
And now I have 10 tokens uh, and that is on the mode blockchain. And maybe finally within, let's just say we're in a game, for example, and we have um, maybe in-game items, but we don't want them on mode. Maybe that's mainly for our tokens. We don't want them on ETH. Maybe that is for our main NFT or access pass or something. And maybe we want the in-game items to be on base. So I have, you know, a item here that I can claim again. Everything is going to get switched over for us automatically to the network we need to be on. We can claim the item, don't have to pay for gas. And then once we claim the item, we should see our item right over here. And then we can do the same thing for the second item as well. So there we go. We've claimed the first one. Uh, we now have one of item one. We can do the same thing for item two. And again, this is on now the base chain. So we can see how this can be maybe somewhat useful. Maybe you're building a game, maybe you're building an app, and maybe you want certain assets to be located on certain blockchains for, you know, specific reasons. And what this combination of in-app wallets and account abstraction allows us to do is create this really seamless experience where now I can interact with all these different chains. I don't have to be bothered about, you know, pop-ups coming up about having to switch networks or anything. Uh, if I have gasless transactions turned on, they're all getting covered by a paymaster through account abstraction. And then you can start to see the bigger picture of how you can create, again, this multi-chain experience and being able to, you know, seamlessly interact with different chains all within one application. And that's really what this multi-chain experiment is. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually implement and build something just like this using ThirdWeb's SDK. So we're going to build out this uh, exact experiment here. Now, before we actually start building out the application, we're going to deploy three different smart contracts. Uh, just like the ones you see here, we're going to deploy an NFT smart contract on Sepolia, a token contract on Mode, and an ERC-1155 NFT contract on base for maybe like something like in-game items or something. So I'm going to head on over to the third web dashboard. And once I'm on the third web dashboard, I'll connect my wallet and everything. And we're going to go ahead and deploy these contracts first. So coming over to the contracts tab and in our contracts, we're going to hit deploy contract. And what I'm going to use for this drop contract uh, is going to be if we scroll down a little bit under the NFT section is this open edition ERC 721 contract. And what a ERC or an open edition ERC 721 contract is, it's a NFT contract with the claim condition functionality, but all the NFTs in this collection are gonna share one piece of metadata. So this is so I don't need to upload and batch upload multiple pieces of metadata, and I can just upload one piece of metadata and be able to have all the NFTs share that metadata. Now, if you are looking to maybe release a collection of, you know, 10,000 PFPs or avatars, you probably want to look more at the NFT drop contract where each NFT token, you can specify its own specific metadata. But for this one, we're going to use the open edition here uh, just to make things simpler for this tutorial. I'm going to hit deploy now. I'm going to put NFT. You can fill out the other contract parameters like the image. Uh, we'll fill out the symbol, but you can add a description, royalty addresses, all of that. And down here at the bottom, we have to select our network or chain we want to deploy to. Now, if I hit this drop down, you can select any EVM compatible network or chain. ThirdWeb supports all EVM blockchains. You can search the network here, put in the chain ID. We got mainnets, testnets. Select the chain that you want to deploy to. Uh, in this case, we're going to deploy this contract to Sepolia. And then we're going to hit deploy now. We'll get a transaction up here to deploy our contract. We'll hit confirm. If you are doing the deploying, if you are deploying an open edition ERC721, you are gonna get another transaction to confirm to set the NFT metadata. So after this, you'll get one more. If you're doing an NFT drop contract, you won't get this setting metadata transaction here. But in this case, I'm gonna confirm this one as well. And then we'll get one more pop-up for a signature request. And that is to add our contract to our third web dashboard. And there you go, signature request. So I'll sign that. Once it has been deployed, you'll be brought to your contract dashboard. You can see your uh, contract title here, the network and chain. And then we have the contract address, which we'll need in a bit. But we'll come over to the left. I'm gonna go to NFTs and I'm gonna set my NFT metadata here for this collection. I'm just gonna call this NFT one. We're gonna give it an image. We have our blob here. 
And I'm not gonna add anything else, but I'm just gonna set this as our NFT just so we have something to claim within this tutorial video. We get a transaction here to confirm and save that piece of metadata. There we go, our metadata has been set. And then the last thing we need to do for this contract on the left-hand navigation here is go to the claim conditions and set a claim condition phase. I'm gonna set up a public phase and I'm not going to charge anything. I'm gonna keep everything as is and hit save phase. We'll hit confirm. And there you go. We now have our NFT smart contract complete. It's deployed on the Sepolia testnet, and we can now add this into our application when we need to. If you ever wanna watch a video that goes a little bit more in depth on deploying smart contracts, we have the videos for that linked in the description below. We go over things like ERC-20, ERC-721, and ERC-1155 smart contracts. We go through the different types of smart contracts we have here at Third Web as well. If you want to check that out again, the links will be down in the description below. But now that we have the NFT smart contract on Sepolia deployed, let's deploy a few more contracts. So I'm going to open up our contracts tab here. And the next thing we're going to do is deploy a token contract. I'm going to come over to deploy contract and I'm going to look for the token drop contract for this tutorial. This is an ERC 20 contract. I'm going to hit deploy now. Uh, we're gonna give this a name, I'll just call this token. And again, you can add your image description if you want to here. Uh, coming down to the network or chain, we're not gonna deploy this to the same Sepolia network though. We're going to look for a different network to deploy this to. I'm gonna deploy this on mode testnet here, and I'm going to deploy it to mode here, and I'm gonna hit the deploy now. Again, we'll get a pop-up here to deploy our contract. We'll hit confirm, and then we'll sign the signature request to add it to our dashboard. Once that has been deployed, we'll be brought to our contract dashboard here again. And for our token contract, uh, really simple. All we need to do is set up a claim condition here. And I'm just gonna add a public phase, keep everything as a default and hit save phase. And we'll think of these contracts again, maybe in a use case of a game or something, maybe our main character NFTs are a profile or an NFT collection on the Ethereum blockchain. Maybe our in-game currency like this token here is going to be on the mode blockchain. And what we're gonna do finally after this is deploy some in-game items on base. And maybe this whole idea of you know an in-game concept can expand and open up the possibilities of how you can use this multi-chain experience for building out other applications as well with using the combination of account abstraction and in-app wallets. All right, and once we have that claim condition set, that does it for our token contract. I'm gonna come up to the contracts tab once again, open up a new tab. We're gonna deploy our last contract here. I'm gonna hit deploy contract, and I'm gonna deploy an addition drop contract. This addition drop contract is an ERC-1155 smart contract and is good for things like, again, maybe in our example, we're building a game, and this is our in-game items here. I'm gonna hit deploy now. We're going to say, uh, we'll just say ERC-1155. Again, you can add your image descriptions, whatever you want for your contract parameters. Uh, down at the network and chain, we're going to select a different chain. And this time I'm going to select the base Sepolia testnet. And we're gonna hit deploy now, confirm that transaction, and then sign that signature to add it to our dashboard. There we go, we're on our dashboard and we're gonna set up our NFTs. So on the left hand navigation, we're going to go to the NFTs. We're gonna do single upload. We're gonna call this item number one. We'll give this an image here. We'll say maybe it's a sword or lazy mint. And again, this is just an example of NFTs that we're going to be using through this tutorial. Of course, when you build out your own application with this multi-chains, you would be deploying the contracts that you felt necessary to work with your application. I'm gonna hit confirm here to lazy mint it. Once that's done, we'll hit single upload again. We're gonna do two items here. So this will be my second item. I'll put that image in. We'll say item two, lazy mint that NFT as well. We'll hit confirm. And there you go. We have deployed our two items here. Now we need to set claim conditions for each of these items. But because this is an ERC-1155 contract, we don't have a claim condition here on the left hand navigation. We have to set a claim condition on each specific NFT. So we'll have to select the NFT here. We'll go to claim conditions and then we can add our claim phases here. So again, I'm just gonna add default public claim conditions to each one of these items. 
There you go. And then I'll come back, do the same thing for item two here, claim condition, and just add a public uh, default public condition here. Confirm this. And there you go. We now have our ERC-1155 smart contract. So again, we deployed an ERC-721 contract on Sepolia testnet. We deployed our token contract on the mode testnet, and we deployed our ERC-1155 contract on the base Sepolia testnet. Now we're going to build our front-end application using ThirdWeb's Connect SDK, and again, build that multi-chain experience that we demoed in the beginning. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here and what we're gonna do is create ourselves a new Next.js project here using ThirdWeb CLI. And I'm just gonna run npx ThirdWeb create app here. We'll be able to name our project. We'll just call this multi-chain experience. And then we can select the framework we wanna use. So you can set up a project in Next.js, Vite or React Native. We're gonna be using Next.js here. And once that's done, we'll change into our multi-chain experience and open this up in our code editor. All right, once in our code editor, we have to set up our third web API key or our client ID in this .env file. And I'm gonna come over to the third web dashboard again here. I'm gonna go into the settings tab and under the settings tab, you can get your API key right over here. We'll copy that or you can create a new API key. If you wanna learn more about API keys, we'll drop a link down in the description below where we go through this whole setup process on how to use Third Web CLI, what are API keys, and how to get a project up and running using Third Web's Connect SDK. So if you wanna check that out, again, link down in the description below. I'm just gonna copy my API key from here. I'm gonna paste it in. And what I'm gonna do here is then also rename this file here. We're gonna get rid of example and just switch it to local here. And then I'll close out that file. Now I'm gonna open up my terminal here in my code editor and just run yarn dev. And we'll take a look at the, the boilerplate code that we get through creating a project through third web. So this should load up really quick here. And there you go. We have our third web SDK with the next JS. Uh, we have links to our docs. Um, down here, as well as the third web dashboard, we have a connect wallet button, and we'll be building off of this boilerplate, and we'll be building off of this template right over here. So I'm gonna come back to my code editor. Let me just close this, and we're gonna come over in our source folder, in the app folder, we're gonna head to the page.tsx file. And in the page.tsx file here, you can see we have the template code here. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some stuff here. I'm gonna get rid of the third web resources, um, which means this a uh, component down here along with the article cards I'm going to get rid of. And then uh, in this header component here, I I'm going to change up this name here. Instead of third web SDK, I'm gonna put our uh, multi-chain experience. Uh, we'll get rid of the span tags here. Uh, we'll get rid of all the read the description down here as well. And we'll just leave the image and the multi-chain experience. So if I come back now, I should see multi-chain experience, the third web logo, and a connect button. So coming back up here, what we'll first build out is our functionality to get the account abstraction or our smart wallets to work across these multiple chains. And this is actually quite easy to do. And we made it really easy to do with the connect button here, which is a UI component through third web. So I'm gonna get rid of this app metadata here. Uh, we have our connect button, we have our client, and all we need to do here is add account abstraction. And what we need to set here is our default chain for account abstraction. So we're gonna set our chain, and what I'm gonna do here is define our chain, and I'm gonna say uh, Sepolia is going to be our default chain. You can use um, predefined chains that we have here. So if we go to import Sepolia, uh, Sepolia is one of those predefined chains that we have within Third Web's SDK, uh, Connect SDK. You're using a chain uh, that is not supported or that we don't have predefined already. You can just pass the chain ID right over here and define chain. Uh, but we're also going to set the sponsor gas and we're going to set sponsor gas to true. So with that account abstraction, right, we're adding it to the connect button UI component. We're just adding account abstraction, defining the default chain to connect to and saying that Yes, it is true we should sponsor gas and we should use a paymaster. And then down here, all we're gonna say is wallets and we're gonna pass it an array of wallets that we want to be able to use as our EOA wallet to the smart wallet here. And we're just gonna say we want in-app wallets and in-app wallet we're gonna import here. 
from third wearable wallets. And in-app wallets is again, the ability to social logins, email, phone number, or pass key. And we're gonna give that as the only option here to connect to. And the last thing we need to do is up here at the top, we are going to change this to uh, use client. Save that. And you can see with just adding a few lines of code, adding account abstraction and the type of wallets we wanna support. And when we come back here to our demo application, I hit connect. Uh, I can now connect with our in-app wallet option. I'm gonna use passkey again here. And you can see right here, we are now connected to a smart account. Uh, we are on the Sepolia chain and we have a smart account that was generated for us, which is utilizing account abstraction. So you can see how easy and quick you can start building these types of things with third web and it, our connect SDK. So now that we have a way to connect our user to our application, we generate them a smart account. The smart account is going to have the same wallet address across all these supported chains. Now we can add some functionality and buttons to actually interact with those smart contracts. So coming back to my code editor here, we're going to scroll down and under this header here, uh, I'm going to create a type here. Uh, we're going to create our components for our buttons and everything. Uh, this is going to be our wallet address prop. And all this is, is our wallet address and it's going to be a string. And then we'll create our first component here. And this is going to be our claim buttons. So we're going to create our uh, claim buttons. And for our claim buttons, we're going to create and utilize the uh, transaction UI, uh, transaction button UI component from third web. So right here, we're going to add our transaction button. The first one is going to say uh, claim let's say Sepolia NFT. We'll just copy this a couple more times here. Second one is gonna say claim uh, mode token. And then we're gonna have two more here. It's gonna be claim our base item one. And then we're gonna have a base item two here as the second one. So if I save that and come back here, oh, we didn't add it to our app. Hold on one sec. Let's add our claim buttons here uh, below this div with our connect button. Save that, come back here. There we go, we have our claim buttons uh, for all of our different uh, contracts that we deployed earlier. We'll give this div here uh, some styling. When you do use uh, ThirdWeb's CLI and create a Next.js project, uh, you are gonna be given a project that has Tailwind in here. So we're gonna be using Tailwind to style this right over here. Now we need to create the interactions for these buttons here. And in order to start interacting with these smart contracts, we need to get the smart contracts. So we're going to create some variables here. We're gonna say this is our Sepolia contract, and we're gonna use the get contract here from Third Web's Connect SDK. Uh, we have to provide it our client. We have to provide it the chain that the contract is on, and we can do this through, again, using define chain. So for our Sepolia one, we're defining Sepolia, and then we need to provide it our contract address, which we'll grab in just a bit. Uh, the other chain that we're gonna, the other contract that we're gonna need is our mode contract. So we'll say mode contract. We'll do the same thing, get contract here, provided our client, uh, defining the chain, it's not on Sepolia, uh, but we don't have the mode testnet as a defined chain. So we're gonna pass the mode testnet chain ID right there, and then we'll get our contract address. And then finally, we have our base NFT. So our base contract, we'll use get contract again, get our client, uh, the chain here, uh, we do have base Sepolia defined. So we'll pass base Sepolia. We'll just make sure we import that from chains as well. And then we'll grab the contract address here. So I'm gonna come and grab all my contract addresses. We're gonna to come to our NFT contract, come up here, paste that in. We're gonna come over to our token contract, copy the address, paste that in. And then finally, we're gonna come and grab our base, con base that contract address in. There we go. So again, we have now wrappers around our contracts and we can start interacting with them. Now we're gonna work on each button here. So the first one is going to be our claim button for Sepolia. We're going to create a transaction 
and we're going to use an extension from third web and extension are pre-made or pre-built functions that we can use to interact with third web contracts. So here we'll be using the claim to function, um, which is going to be an extension. So if we come up here and we import uh, claim to, we can import this from uh, third web slash extensions slash ERC. This one is a 721. Now claim two is an extension that exists across ERC 2721 and 1155. And we're going to be using all three of them. So we're going to uh, change the name of this and say as, and then we'll say uh, claim ERC 721. So we'll make sure we use claim ERC 721 here. And now we can call the claim to function for ERC 721, which we need to provide at the contract the uh, address that it's going to, and then the quantity. So here we have the contract, which is going to be our Sepolia contract. We have our two, uh, which is going to go to our wallet address. And then we have the quantity, and the quantity is going to be one, but we do need to provide it as a big number. So we'll just add N there. And then that is our transaction. So we're calling the claim to function for our ERC721 token on the Sepolia contract. We're sending it to the wallet address that we passed to this component right over here. And then we're only claiming a quantity of one. And then we can say on transaction confirmed, we'll say async here. Uh, what we'll do is just alert that the we claimed our Sepolia NFT. So once the transaction goes through, we get that alert right over here. So we're going to do similar here to the claim of the mode token. So we're going to say transaction here. Uh, we're not going to do claim ERC 721 though. Uh, we are going to import here. So let's just copy this. We'll say claim two. This is going to be claim two. This is going to be ERC 20. And the extension is going to be from the ERC 20 extension here. So we'll come down here and we'll be calling the ERC claim or ERC 20 claim. We provide it with the contract. This one is going to be our mode contract. Uh, we send the two, which is going to be our wallet address. And then the final thing we need to do is the quantity here. So for our token quantity, maybe this one we want to do a little bit more. We'll say uh, uh, 10 tokens here. So 10, um, but you can see here, it's supposed to be a string, not a big int. So we'll provide it a string right over there. And then same thing over here, we'll say on transaction confirmed. We'll alert and we'll just say we claimed our mode token, right? So that does it for claiming our ERC20 token. And then finally, we'll interact with this base contract here. So we'll say transaction. We're going to do the same thing. So coming up here, we need this claim to for ERC1155. So we'll say 1155 here. And this is from our 1155 extensions. And let me come down right over here. We're going to get our contract here. which is going to be our base contract. We have our two, which is our wallet address. Uh, for an 1155, we have to specify the token ID, which uh, in this case, uh, the first one is going to be zero. And then we specify the quantity, uh, which is only going to be one. Oop, let me get rid of that there. And that, and that. So we have our ERC 1155 claim on our base contract, sending to the wallet address that we pass, uh, token ID zero, and then quantity one. I'm gonna copy this. This is gonna be the same thing for the second item here. The only difference is this token ID is going to be token ID one instead of token ID zero. And then we have our on transaction claim here, which will say we claimed our uh, base item. So I'll copy that, paste that in there. So there you go. We now have buttons to claim those different uh, tokens from the different smart contracts on the different chains. Finally, let's uh, create a section where we can actually display this information. So I'm going to create another component down here. We're going to call this our wallet balances. And this will again be using our wallet address prop. We'll say return here, give it a div. And we're going to call this our wallet um, balances. And we're going to have our different balances here. So the first one, uh, we'll actually just show the wallet address first, right? So we, that we know that our wallet address is the same across all chains. 
Uh, we'll also show here our Sepolia NFT balance. So let's say Sepolia NFT. We'll copy that. Then we'll have our mode token. And then we'll have our base item. And then this will be item one. And then we'll have item two here as well. So those are the be the different balances and everything that we show. Uh, I'm going to add this up here. We're going to have our wallet balances. Uh, we need to provide our wallet addresses here. So and we need to provide the claim buttons and everything with our wallet address here. So wallet address, we'll get that wallet address here. We'll get the same for wallet balances here. So let's get our wallet balance really quick up here. We're going to create a variable called account and we're going to use the use active account hook here from third web. This is going to give us the connected wallet or connected account information. And then for that, we can provide this here with our account dot address and that will give us the address of the connected wallet. There we go. There we go. And those uh, wallet addresses will get passed to our components down over here. So let's get the wallet balances or not the wallet balances, but let's get the token balances for each of our NFTs here. So similar to how we created the transactions for the transaction buttons for each of the contracts, we are going to get the data and the balances of each of these NFT or these token balances uh, on these different chains. So the first one we're going to do is get the Sepolia NFT balance. And we're going to be using the use read contract hook here. And we're going to use another extension. And this time we are going to use the balance of extension. So for each one of these here, we are going to be using, again, the balance of. Uh, we're going to say change these though because they're all balance ofs for each one of these extensions. So we'll say balance of ERC721. We'll copy that here for each one of these. And we're going to say balance of ERC 20 and then balance of ERC 1155. So with the balance of ERC 721, we come back down here. We're going to be using the balance of ERC or ERC 721 here. And we need to provide it with our contract, which we are going to say, Hey, get our contract um, and define our chain of Sepolia, define our, pass it our contract address. And then the owner here is going to be the wallet address. Again, the wallet address that we passed to the component here. We're going to do the same thing for the other chains and other balances. So we're going to get our balance of ERC 20. This one is not the owner though. This is going to be our address. And then this is going to call the balance of ERC 20, get our mode contract and then finally, we have to do um, two, so one for, and then next we have to get it for balance of item number one. So we're gonna use the balance of ERC 1155, get our contract, give it our base Sepolia contract here. We have our owner, and then the token ID for this is for item one is token ID zero. And then finally we have the item two, which is gonna be token ID one. So same thing, we're just changing the token IDs here so we can get the different balances. Now that we have those balances and that information, we can display that down here. So in our Sepolia NFT, we're going to say if we have our wallet address, we're going to display the uh, Sepolia NFT balance and it will say dot to string or we'll display zero. So if we don't have a wallet address, it, the default is just going to show zero. But once we have our wallet connected, and we pass our wallet address to this component here, we should display the balance of that wallet. Same thing over here. We're going to say if we have wallet address, we're going to um, display our token balance. Now, the token balance that we get returned is in way. So we're going to use the two ether here from third web. This is going to convert it to an ether value. So we're going to say our mode token balance or zero or we display zero. And then for, for the item number one on base, we'll say if we have our wallet address, we'll get our base item one balance dot two string, or we'll show zero. Same thing goes for item number two, wallet address. We'll have our base item two balance dot two string, or we'll show zero. 
And then finally up here, we're going to display our wallet address. So we'll say wallet address. Uh, we're going to say if we have a wallet address, we'll display the wallet address. Or we'll say no wallet is connected. So there we go. And now if we take a look at our application here, we have our different buttons that we can use to claim the NFTs across these different chains. We have our wallet balances here. We have our wallet address, which again should be the same across all chains. So this shouldn't change as we collect these different NFTs. And then we have the balances for our different tokens here. So here we don't have any tokens, but we can claim our Sepolia NFT here. This is our transaction button. It's executing the claim to function. And then we should be able to claim uh, NFT on the Sepolia chain right over here. There we go. We claimed our Sepolia NFT. You can see there our Sepolia NFT goes up. Now I should be able to claim 10 mode token with this one. You can see wallet address stays the same. We can check all the balances here. It's claiming 10 mode tokens. It is switching the network for us automatically. It, and it then claims our mode tokens here. And now we have 10. We can do the same thing on base. It's switching over now to the base network, claiming a base NFT. We maintain the same wallet address. We're still using account abstraction. We're using things like gasless transactions and paymasters. And now we have base item number one. And finally, we can claim base item number two. And this is the same claim, just a different token ID. But again, the idea of this is we're able to use account abstraction across multiple chains, maintain the same wallet address, utilize all the features that we get through account abstraction, like paymasters and gasless transactions. And we get to build these seamless multi-chain experiences where, again, I can just sign in with something like a pass key or my social account and be able to interact with all these different chains, not have to pay for gas. And all of this is super easy and super quick to build using ThirdWeb's Connect SDK. And there you have it. We built our very own multi-chain experience where we were able to still utilize the functionality and features of account abstraction, maintain the same wallet address across multiple chains, and we were able to then interact and claim different tokens like ERC-721, 20, and 1155s from different blockchains, all using the same wallet address through account abstraction. So I hope this experiment was able to showcase a couple things. I wanted to showcase how you can build applications with these multi-chain experiences while still using features like account abstraction. Also wanted to showcase how easy and quickly you can build these types of applications using ThirdWeb's Connect SDK. While utilizing ThirdWeb's Connect SDK, you're able to build and ship products a lot quicker. So I hope this video brought some value to you and you learned a few things. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. And if you need any help with this, we'll drop a link down to our support team where you can open up a support ticket. They'll help you out, answer any of the questions you may have. You can also join our Discord community, check out our office hours, ask some questions, and learn a bunch of new information and new features that we're releasing here at ThirdWeb. But I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.